In this video, we're going to take a look at the Model Mania Design Challenge from 2005. If you're unfamiliar with Model Mania, it's a design challenge held every year at SolidWorks World where users are given a drawing such as this and they're tasked with creating the part inside of SolidWorks both as quickly and as accurately as possible. And if that wasn't enough, when they're done, they're given a drawing with several changes on it, which again, they have to make as quickly and accurately as possible. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we might create this part inside of SolidWorks. Now initially it looks really simple. Unless you're unfamiliar with the loft feature, it's a fairly easy part to make. What's really unique about this is, is there's several ways to approach this design. And we're going to look at three of those in this video today. When we're done, we'll take a look at the changes and how the three ways we did phase one might affect phase two. So a few key things to note here. Notice in the top view, this profile is really made up from four arcs, two of which are symmetric left to right and two which are symmetric top to bottom. But on top of that, notice the feature across the top. There's this dome shape, which significantly has this 250 millimeter radius from the front view, but on the right view, it's a 75 millimeter radius. That'll be a little bit tricky. Finally, the area that you can really do several ways is going to be these bottom two features. First is this cylindrical boss that comes out of the bottom, and then this loft or blend feature that connects them together. So let's dive into SolidWorks. Let's start with that top profile. It's probably the easiest place to start, and this won't change between versions. Now I had mentioned that this shape is symmetric both left to right and top to bottom. A good way to capture symmetry is with a few construction lines, and I'm going to do that using the new midpoint line feature found in SolidWorks 2015. And because I'm going to use it for symmetry, I'm also going to enable the for construction option. Now I can simply drag a few construction lines out from the center left to right and top to bottom. We're going to use this for mirroring about and creating symmetry in a few different ways. But if you accidentally didn't create these as construction lines, you can always go back and select them later and choose a construction geometry option from the pop-up. Now I'm going to go ahead and start by creating the arc out on the right hand side using a center point arc. You'll notice when you go to create an arc, SolidWorks actually allows you to enter the radius right there. So let's go ahead and do that and capture the 10 millimeter radius. Then I'm simply going to draw this arc. Now one of the things you'll notice is when I do this, there actually is no symmetry captured here. One of the first things I want to show is how to capture symmetry manually. You can do this by selecting any piece of geometry on either side of a construction line and the construction line itself, all holding control, and then add a relationship type called Make Symmetric. Now notice when I make changes from one side to the other, those changes are reflected on both sides of that center line. Now, the next way I'm going to show to capture symmetry is probably the easiest and most common. I'm going to select any geometry I want on one side of a construction line in the construction line itself and just simply choose mirror entities. Now notice we not only mirror the geometry, but it maintains the symmetric relationship on either side. The last way I'm going to show is if you have a little forethought and know you're going to be capturing symmetry, you can pre-select that center, uh, center line and choose the dynamic mirror entities option. SolidWorks will add a few hash marks to either end of the construction line signifying that anything you create on one side of the center line will automatically be mirrored to the other. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, create this arc using a tangent arc. Notice it automatically captures the tangency coming out of the first arc and because the two outside arcs are symmetric it'll automatically be tangent to the other arc as well. And as I just mentioned when we place this because dynamic mirror entities was enabled notice the bottom arc gets added automatically maintaining symmetry. You can again see this by making adjustments to either side of this. Now let's continue to define this shape. I want to capture the radius of this top arc which is 90 millimeters and we need to capture the overall length. Now by default SolidWorks when dimensioning to arcs dimensions from center to center. A tip here is, is if you hold the shift key, you can dimension from the outside or inside of an arc, again, holding the shift key to the other arc, capturing the same thing. Notice it was really easy for us to dimension from outside to outside by just simply holding the shift key down. 
Now that we've got that profile done, let's go ahead and extrude this. Now there's an arc on the top, but the top of that arc is 12 millimeters high, and that's the number we're going to go ahead and capture right now. So let's go back to the drawing and re-emphasize this. The arc on the front view is 250 millimeters, but the arc on the side has a radius of 75. We want to capture both of these. So let's go into SolidWorks and look at how we can do this. You can actually do this on either the front or right plane. I'm going to simply choose front. If you decide to do this on the right hand side, the numbers I'm going to use would be flipped though. I'm going to create a three point arc and I'm going to do this from the outside edge to the outside edge and I'm going to hover over and snap to that edge and simply place this. What I do need to capture is that overall height, and I'm going to do this using a tangency relationship. Then we'll go ahead and add that radius value, which we know, and because this is the front view, we're going to capture the 250 millimeter radius. But notice that the sketch is still underdefined and that both sides are free to move. This is because the center point hasn't been centered on the part. Now you could zoom way out, find the center point, and you can see it's quite a ways down, and line this up with the origin vertically, but maybe an easier way to do this would be to select the two endpoints and make them horizontal to one another. So we have the first arc. What about the 75 millimeters? Well, we're going to create this using a revolved cut, and we're going to need an axis of revolution anyway. But notice what I'm going to do. I'm going to dimension from the axis of revolution, and again, holding the shift key, I can dimension to the outside of that radius. Here, we'll capture that 75 millimeter radius, which represents the radius on the right-hand side view. Now, when we do a revolve cut, that'll be captured all as part of this one sketch. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and add the revolve cut. You may notice that I didn't close this profile off. And in fact, when I go to create the revolve cut, SolidWorks will let me know that it's not closed and ask me to close it automatically. I'm going to choose no to show that you don't always have to close a sketch off. When you choose this option, SolidWorks will default to using a thin feature. All we need to do is specify a value that we know will be thick enough to cut through the whole part. We also need to ensure that it's cutting in the proper direction, in this case to the outside. Now when we press OK, we can see that we get that shape on that part that we're looking for. Now at this point, I'm going to save three different versions of this file as we look at the next several steps. All right, so I've saved my different versions. Let's take a look at the next part of this. We need to create not only this blend, but also the boss at the bottom. The first method I'm going to show is probably uh, a little different than most people's first approach. I'm going to do this using multi-bodies. Notice, however, though, that I'm going to start my sketch right on the top plane. This isn't as conventional as some people are used to because look what happens as I choose to extrude this, the five millimeters. It's coming from the wrong location. This is where I really like to use the from option in the extrusion property manager. Here we can set that 15 millimeter offset and create this feature all within one single feature. We don't have to do any math to calculate the length of it. But when we do this, however, we've ended up creating a multi-body part. It contains the top half and our boss on the bottom. This actually makes the next feature quite easy to create. We need to blend these together. And to do this, we're going to use a lofted boss. And we're simply going to choose the top face of the cylindrical feature and the bottom face of our top feature. SolidWorks does all the heavy lifting, blending the two surfaces together. And all we need to do in this case is press OK. So you can see that method was quite easy to create, though we had to use a few advanced options in the extrusion. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the other parts. In this model, we're going to take a look at doing the same thing, something very similar to what we just did before, but we're going to create a plane, we're going to create that sketch on a plane 15 millimeters below the top plane. So to do this, we're going to create a reference plane. We'll set the distance 15 millimeters and ensure that the offset is in the correct direction. This time, we're going to go ahead and simply create that 27 millimeter sketch down on this offset plane and we're going to go ahead and create the extrusion. Again, it's five millimeters, and you want to make sure that the direction is correct.
But while we're at it, why don't we just join these two pieces of geometry together? Notice in SOLIDWORKS you can set a second direction. In this case, I'm going to choose an up to next end condition to join this together. Now I'm doing this intentionally to show one of the next steps we're going to focus on. We need to create the blend, but notice we don't have a face to work with here. Using the law feature, you don't have to just select faces. You can also reuse sketches from individual features. And in this case, I'm going to dig down into the very first feature and choose the top profile sketch. And going down in the feature manager tree, choose that same sketch that we just used to create the boss feature and get the exact same results we just uh, saw a moment ago. So we've seen that you can do a law from face to face and from sketch to sketch. But let's go ahead and take a look at a third example now. It's going to be very similar to the example we just created before. We're going to go ahead and create our offset plane, and we're going to go ahead and draw our sketch on this plane with a 27 uh, millimeter diameter circle. And this time, instead of creating the boss first, we're going to create the loft first. And what I want to point out here is that you can not only loft from face to face and sketch to sketch, you can use any combination. In this case, we're going to choose the sketch that we drew on the offset plane and the face on the bottom of this feature. Now when we go ahead and do this and press OK, you can see that SOLIDWORKS has created this. Now at this point, we can just simply reuse that sketch that we created and create a 5 millimeter extrusion down off from the bottom. Likewise, in this case, you could have just drawn a new sketch on the bottom and used convert entities as well. Now that that's been finished and we've shown three different ways to create this part, let's take a minute and take a look at the changes that would have been presented to us. The changes in this case look quite drastic, though they're actually quite simple to accomplish. The first thing we'll notice is that three degrees have been, of draft have been added to several of the faces. In particular, looking at section AA, we can see that the inside of the part has been hollowed and also includes this three degrees of draft. So we'll have to figure out how to capture this. There's also several fillets that have been added in this step. We'll look at those a little bit later. The thing I want to look at is how to capture this cavity that's been created. And in all three examples, it's going to be done very similar as well as the draft. So let's go into SOLIDWORKS and I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the first example we looked at. Uh, in this case, this was the method where we created this using multi-bodies. If you remember, uh, we created the extrusion out in space. Now the first thing we do need to do is we need to add this draft to this top feature. And the easiest way to do this is to simply edit the feature and enable draft right within the extrusion itself. This way you don't have to go back and add draft as a feature later on. So how do we go about capturing that hollowed out portion of that design? Well, this is where multi-body comes into play again. If you remember when we created this loft, everything was joined together, and that's because of an option in the lower left of the feature manager. Here, every body in the part was automatically selected to be merged together. In this case, we're simply going to deselect this boss out here on the bottom to exclude that from being merged. You'll notice in our feature manager tree we now have two solid bodies. I'm going to temporarily hide that lower portion. To create the cavity in this part we're just going to create a shell with a five millimeter wall thickness and select the bottom two faces. That will capture that overall shape that we're looking for. But now when I reshow this body on the bottom, notice what's happened. It doesn't extrude up into the part. In this case, we're going to have to go ahead and add some additional material by adding an additional feature. I'm going to go ahead and create a sketch on this face, use convert entities, and in this example, I'm going to choose to extrude this up to next. That automatically just ensures that it terminates uh, fully into the part. We do also need to capture some draft here, so I'm going to enable three, the draft from the feature again, but notice in this example, we need to select the draft outwards option to get it in the proper direction. Likewise, we do need to add the draft to that bottom feature. Here we're just simply going to select it, enable it, and press OK. And so there we have the first example and we've seen how we've made the change. We had to make a few changes to some of the uh, 
options within the features themselves. Let's go ahead and take a look at our second example. If you remember, in this example, we went ahead and created a plane, drew a sketch down here, and then extruded up into the part and added the loft after the fact. This is probably the trickiest one to fit. And the reason is, is we can't roll back and get rid of the boss at the bottom to create the shell. Or can we? Because we chose to use sketches as our reference geometry in the loft, we can simply reorder the features. Now notice what happens. I can scroll back, we have the same shape we had before, and we can add the same shell we had before. Now when I roll down, notice again, when we created this extrusion, we chose the up to next option in the up direction. All that needs to be done in both of these examples is we need to have the draft options enabled. So let's go ahead and quickly do that. And in this one, notice we're going to have to enable draft in two directions. First is the down direction where it's captured properly, but notice in the up direction, again, we'll have to choose the draft outwards option. So there was our second example. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our last example. Our last example is probably one of the easiest to correct. We're going to just simply roll back. We have the same shape we had before, and you guessed it, we're just simply going to create our shell feature again. And when we roll to end, we can see this extrusion comes down. But notice in this example, it doesn't go up. Well, what we're actually doing here is very similar to the second example. We're just going to enable the second direction up to next. And while we're here, let's go ahead and set those draft options. And then finally, let's enable the draft option on the top of the part. So we've looked at the three different ways to solve this. The last step is to go ahead and add the fillets. And these are really the same for all three versions. We're going to select the fillet tool. It's a one millimeter radius. And I'm going to just simply show again the value of using faces. Whenever you select the face when filleting, it'll grab all the adjacent edges to that face. This is especially important when you go to create these bottom faces. Notice how easy it is for me to select the two bottom faces and it grabs all those edges. This combined with tangent propagation, notice when I select the single face, SolidWorks automatically propagates the fillet down this edge here and down along the side. We do need to capture that inside edge over there as well and the same two over here. So there you have it. You can see three different ways that we've created this part in the three different ways we looked at the changes. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you want to learn more about SolidWorks World or Model Mania, please check out the rest of the blog post that this is featured in.